Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be performing an in-depth data analysis on the Big Mart sales dataset that is available on Kaggle. Now, if you're interested to know how to perform machine learning on this dataset, I've done a separate video on this topic and I'll be adding the links in the description down below. Before moving forward, if you're new to this channel and like my content, Please do leave a like and subscribe to this channel and turn on bell notification to stay updated each time I upload a new content. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So, we are importing pandas and numpy for basic data operations, we are importing matplotlib and cbonds for visualizing the data, then we are importing style to set a style for the plot and here we are using the style as ggplot, then we are importing warnings to ignore any warnings that might occur. Now that we have imported the required libraries, let's read the data from the csv file. Now let's visualize the data using the head function. So that gives us an idea of the data that we are dealing with. To get the size of the data set that we are dealing with, we can use the shape attribute. So this gives us the shape of the data set. To get further information of the data set such as the number of rows, the columns and the data type of the different entries in the data set, we can use the info method. As we can see, this gives us the number of rows, the number of columns, the data type of the different entries and the number of non-null entries. By analyzing this data type, we can see that there are both numerical and categorical data in a data set. And by analyzing the non-null column, we can see that there are null values in a data set. Now if we want to get the count of the null values explicitly, we can use the snullsum method. As you can see, this returns us the sum of all null values in the dataset. Similarly, let's get a count of the different data types in our dataset. That is, let's see how many categorical and numerical entries are there in our dataset. So that gives us an idea of the different categorical and numerical entries in a dataset. Now let's explore each of these different data types individually. Let's start with the categorical column. We can use a head function to visualize the categorical data. So this gives us more idea about the categorical data in a dataset. From our initial analysis, we were able to understand that there were null values in our dataset. So let's explore these columns further to remove the null values in the dataset. So let's visualize the outlet size using a count plot. So 
So from this, we can understand that majority of the outlets in our data set are of medium size. Now if we want to get a count of the different outlet sizes, we can use the value counts method. So from the above two methods, we understood that majority of the outlets in our dataset are of medium size. So let's replace the null values in the dataset using the most common outlet size, which is medium outlet size. Now let's check if the null values have been replaced. And as we can see, the null values have been replaced. Now let's explore the other columns. So by analyzing the item fat column, we can see that there are only two different fat categories. But in a dataset, this is represented by different notations and as a result, we have five different categories. So let's fix this next. So let's use the replace function to replace the different labels. Now let's once again create a count plot using the modified data. And as we can see, our data labels have been fixed and we have only two labels for the item fat content column. And when we analyze this data, we can see that the majority of the food items in our data are low fat items. Now let's explore the next column, outlet identifier. To make this data more readable, let's change the axis. As you can see, the outlet identifier labels are more readable in this view. We can also get a count of the different outlet identifiers using the value counts method. Now let's explore the different item types in a dataset. So from this plot, we can see that based on the number of items in the store, the top available products are fruits and vegetables followed by snack foods. Similarly, let's visualize the remaining columns, outlet location type and outlet type. Let's look at how to plot them together as subplots.
So from this, we can infer that majority of the outlet types in the data set belong to supermarket type 1 and majority of the location type belong to type 3. Now that we have analyzed the categorical data, let's analyze the numerical data. To analyze the numerical data further, we can use the describe method. This returns us the statistical details of the numerical data such as the min, max, standard deviation, etc. Now let's explore the different numerical data further starting with the item weight. There seems to be no specific pattern in terms of the item weight. Let's plot a histogram for the item visibility. As we can see, the item visibility data is right skewed. Let's explore the next column, item MRP. From this, we can understand that there are four main distributions for the item MRP. Let's explore the next column, Outlet Establishment here. So from this, we can understand that the majority of the outlets in a dataset were established in the year 1985 and the least number of outlets were established in the year 1998. Next, let's perform some bivariate analysis on our data. That is, let's explore the individual data with respect to the target data, which in this case is the item outlet sales. Let's start with the categorical data before moving into numerical data. So to do this, let's create a bar plot comparing the item type with the item outlet sales. Now that's interesting, based on the item outlet sales, we can see that the products that are contributing higher to the outlet sales are starchy foods and seafoods rather than the top available products in the store which are fruits and vegetables and snack foods. Similarly, let's do a comparison of the store sales for the different outlet sizes. From this, we can infer that the store sales are higher for the medium sized outlets. Now let's analyze the outlet type and the outlet location type with the item outlet sales. From this, we can understand that Tire 3 has the highest sales volume as it has all the different types of stores. Finally, let's plot a heat map to see which of these numerical features has the highest correlation with the item outlet sales.
So from this, we can understand that the item MRP has the highest correlation with outlet sales and the outlet establishment year has the least correlation with the item outlet sales. So this being a data analysis video, it's time to draw inference based on the data that we analyzed. Our data consisted of 7 categorical features and 5 numerical features. Upon analyzing these individual features, we could infer the following. The data set consists of different outlet sizes with the majority being medium size. Majority of the food items in the data set consisted of low fat items compared to the regular items. Based on the quantity of the items available in the store, the majority of the items were identified to be fruits and vegetables followed by snack foods. Based on the outlet type, the majority of the outlets in the data set fall under the supermarket type 1 category. Upon analyzing the item MRP column, there are 4 main distributions for the item MRP data. The majority of the outlets in our data set were established in the year 1985 and the least number of outlets were established in the year 1998. Upon performing bivariate analysis on this data, we could infer the following. The products that are contributing higher to the outlet sales are starchy foods and seafoods rather than the top available products in the store, which are fruits and vegetables and snack food. The store sales are higher for the medium sized outlets compared to the other outlet sizes. Tier 3 has the highest sales volume as it has all the different types of stores. The item MRP has the highest correlation with the outlet sales and the outlet establishment year has the least correlation with the item outlet sales. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an idea of performing exploratory data analysis on the Big Mart sales dataset. Make sure to follow me on my social media handles for more interesting content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.